was. Again, there was a dogma. There was a preconception. Human beings couldn't have flourished in the Amazon. It's, a, it's not a resource-rich area. The soils are poor. Um, it's a difficult area, challenging to get to very far from the Bering Straits. So the view was that humans hadn't entered the Amazon until about a thousand years ago. And then gradually, little by little, that view has begun to change. And it's begun to change because of the tragic clearances of the Amazon, because the Amazon rainforest is literally being cut down and turned into soya bean farms and, uh, and cattle ranches. And in that cutting down process has emerged things that shouldn't be there at all. Uh, for example, evidence that large cities flourished in the Amazon, enormous cities, which were larger then the, there was a Spanish explorer who went down the Amazon River system in 1541 to 1542. He was the first European to cross the entire length of South America from west to east uh, along the Amazon. He reported seeing incredible cities, advanced arts and crafts, millions of people, a thriving culture. Uh, and 100 years later, when other Europeans got into the Amazon, they couldn't find these cities. So they said, oh, Francisco Oriana, that was his name, made it all up. It was just a, it was just a fantasy. And then in the last decade, as the clearances of the Amazon have proceeded, we've begun to see the traces of those cities. What happened was that the Spaniards brought smallpox into the Amazon. Oh. Smallpox devastated the local population because there was no immunity to it. There was a massive die off. The cities were deserted. Within a 50 years, they were completely overgrown by the jungle. And that's why they were not seen by the explorers who came in 100 years later. But now the jungle is being cleared. Those cities are emerging. And we can say that uh, a city like London, which had a population of roughly 50,000 in the 16th century, there were cities of that size all over the Amazon, wow. huge numbers of them. And a possible total population of the Amazon that exceeded 20 million people. What? Yes, 20 million. This is the, the latest uh, evidence from the Amazon. And then you ask yourself, how did they do that? How did they feed 20 million people in the Amazon? Because it's a fact, rainforest soils are poor. It's one of the reasons these soya bean farms are a really stupid idea, because once you clear the rainforest, the land is largely unfertile and you can't grow stuff on it for very long. So how did they feed all these people? The answer was, they invented a soil. And that soil has a name, it's called Terra Preta. Archaeologists refer to it as Amazonian dark earths or Amazonian black earth. It's a man-made soil. It's thousands of years old. It's full of microbes that are not found in adjoining soil. It's based around biochar. Uh, and you can take a handful of 8,000-year-old terra preta and you can add it to barren soil and that soil will instantly become fertile. It's highly sought after in the Amazon and it explains how they fed these people. There was science in the Amazon. How did they, they create this? Well, this is something that's not understood. It's still not understood by soil experts to this day as to how that was done. But it's one of many intriguing evidences, pieces of evidence of much higher uh, development in the Amazon that it has been given credit for and of a kind of science in the Amazon. Jamie's got an image of it up there. So this is it? This is Terra Preta, yeah. yeah exactly. Wow. Exactly. And so was that done by burns? Did they use controlled burns? They, they did. They, one way that it was achieved was, uh, was to do wet burning. Um, of middens, they would be they would be burned and smolder. They wouldn't burn fiercely, which just produces charcoal. They would they would burn and smolder, um, and and that bi what is called biochar would result, and that's part of the fertility of the soil. But the mystery is the microbial content of this soil, which is completely different from the microbes uh, in neighboring soils. And that remains unexplained. As so do they, what are the theories? Composting? Some sort of advanced composting? Yes, some, sort of, some sort of advanced composting. But again, what has not been explained wow. is the, is the mi microbial uh, content of these soils. So there, there, first of all, is an issue of how, uh, two things, how large populations get fed in the Amazon and evidence that there was a culture in the Amazon that was capable of manipulating the environment in such a way that it could support large populations with the invention of Terra Preta. Secondly, new evidence previously not recognized, the Amazon is basically a garden. The Amazon is a man-made rainforest. Uh, there are certain trees like Brazil nut trees or the ice cream bean tree, which are food crops, which are very, very valuable. And they dominate the, uh, the, the tree regime in, in the Amazon. They're what's, what's referred to as hyperdominant species. In other words, people living in the Amazon over thousands of years selected certain trees, which they then cultivated and grew. So the whole thing is not 
simply a wild, pristine rainforest. It's a very ancient man-made environment. And emerging from that man-made environment, as well as evidence of large cities, large populations, and this mysterious dark earth – 